This video is an overview of my hobby electrical engineering activities over the past two years. A little about me. Grew up with the Atari 1200XL, Atari 1040ST, and Amiga computers. Professionally, I'm a software engineer and have been for the past 25 years. Before this, I had never touched a breadboard or done any hardware engineering. The story starts with the Ben Eater 6502 kit. I was locked down during 2020. Uh, watching YouTube discovered Ben Eater was instantly hooked. Watched all the 6502 kit videos. I bought the 6502 kit and watched the videos again and again. Thanks, Ben. Finished Ben Eater's kit, but was only getting started. Added the ACIA. Western Design Center produces a modern variant of this chip today. It's the Asynchronous Communications Interface Adapter. It's designed as a helper chip for the 6502. ACIA was awesome because it enabled serial communication. Could now hook up a terminal. Wasmon is 250 bytes of the most useful 6502 code ever written. It was created by Steve Wozniak for the Apple One. It's a monitor application that allows you to use the serial interface with a terminal to inspect memory ranges, change memory, or start execution at an address. Wasmon was super helpful because I could take a compiled binary, use Python to convert it into Wasmon memory set commands, and then paste that into the terminal. This made it possible to compile and run without pulling out the EEPROM and flashing it every time. Microsoft Basic was on just about every computer in the 80s. The Microsoft Basic source is on GitHub. I started with the OSI variant and ended with the CBM2 variant. I believe it's the same version that was on the Commodore PET. When I thought back to this era, Load Runner stood out as a favorite game. I decided that what I needed to do was to get Load Runner working on my computer. A close second was Ultima 4, but Load Runner took the top spot as my favorite game of the era. I designed a video circuit with text mode with Logisim. Logisim is a free digital logic simulation tool. The simulation included logic for horizontal and vertical sync signals, also included a font ROM and a fake display. The simulation outputted the simulated rendering to a text file for inspection. Now I needed video. My first attempt was to use a modified SVGA signal, 800 by 600 halved to 400 by 300. Here's the bare minimum video circuit. It looks like I was plugging the RGB wires into the vertical counters here, creating the bars. Here's the working design on breadboard. 80 column text, a font ROM with PC fonts, memory access at 5 megahertz, pixel clock at 40 megahertz. Video has its own RAM, also is write only. Can't read from the video RAM. Had to keep a copy in CPU RAM. With text mode working, I wrote a PS2 driver in 6502 assembly for keyboard. I used two of the 6522 pins, clock on an interrupt line, and one of the pins for data. Just did bit banging. It works fine at 1.5 megahertz. For each clock pulse on the PS2 clock line, an IRQ is fired. The processor samples the data line one bit at a time and assembles a value in memory. Ben Eater literally discards this approach first thing in his PS2 video. Ben uses shift registers. I built mine before Ben published his video and I'm happy enough with the results. The video was pretty darn stable but not perfect. Uh, ran at 40 megahertz on a breadboard. Uh, was not satisfied. Needed to do graphics in order to run Load Runner. Tried adding graphics. Too unstable. Too complex. Never did work great. Basically doubled the size of the design. Also, 400 by 300 is not a great resolution for an 8-bit computer. Lots of 16-bit math. I ended up tearing the whole thing down. Recycled it for the breadboards. In retrospect, I probably should have turned this implementation into a PCB before trying to add graphics. KiCad is open source, free, and awesome. I watched some YouTube videos, I did a lot of tinkering, I produced Gerber files and sent them off to JLC PCB. PCB arrived, PCB populated. I was intimidated by this, really wasn't that difficult in retrospect. Here is VGA take two, this time 320 by 240. I've got two implementations here side by side. I built it twice. The first time I build by tinkering, I then convert the finished design into a schematic. The second build is from the schematic to find errors. This build is four bits per pixel, each byte storing two pixels. Uh, that's 16 colors per pixel. When I started, I had no idea how I was going to get Load Runner working. I went exploring and found some GitHub projects, a remake in JavaScript. There was a port in progress for the Commander X16 and a version for the Roku. I ended up finding a guy on the internet who had ported the Apple II version of Load Runner to a Coco 3 and wrote a blog post about it. Uh, basically, the one guy in the world that I needed to find. I contacted him and he provided the full disassembled Apple II sources as well as the level data. He did some work to make some of the symbols human readable. He also provided great porting tips. 
I built a 6502 emulator. I watched one Dave Poo video for about two minutes. That's all I needed. I kind of knew 6502 assembly before, but if you really want to learn an instruction set, build an emulator. Klaus 2 M5 has uh, 6502 functional tests on GitHub. These were super useful for testing the validity of the emulator. Level up. I wrote some line drawing routines. Here's the emulator running the same ROM as the hardware's EEPROM. Here's the 6502 V1 PCB hooked up to the breadboard VGA V2 and ROM disk. And it works on the hardware. First try. Oh my god, is this really working? This would not have been possible without the emulator. Unbelievable. Unfortunately, RAM was hard-coded to the lower 32 kilobytes. No reason for this limitation. Also, 32 KB of RAM is not enough. Need to use a different chip. Hardware had to change. I bodged the RAM and the decoder. So easy to change the memory map on the emulator. So hard on the PCB. Time to rev the PCB. Clearly a stress test. The system is not yet stable. It's contention on the RAM. I had to run at a very low clock speed, somewhere around 500 kilohertz to get it to run. This is running on the bodged PCB V1 with the VGA V2 at four bits per pixel. Check out the visible artifacts. You can see the CPU writing to the RAM. This could easily be fixed with dual port RAM, but too expensive. I also enjoy the challenge of making it work. Clearly I have more work to do on the hardware. Building a load runner appliance with 1970s style ICs would probably be the most expensive game system in the world. I have a working emulator. Can I port the emulator to a Raspberry Pi Pico? Can it run on a Raspberry Pi Pico? Of course this means I need to buy a 3D printer. Whoa, 3D printing is amazing. Why didn't I do this sooner? Learned how to use Autodesk Fusion 360, cool modeling software, lots of YouTube tutorials. Tweak the emulator to get the timing exactly right. More on LoadRunner. Doug Smith authored Load Runner in 1983. Doug passed away in 2013. I had visions of selling these boxes, and my journey led me to Tazai Games, who owns the rights to Load Runner. These are Doug Smith's original source code discs. Tazai were super cool and supportive. I actually ended up buying an Apple II Plus to help Tazai back up the original source code, which were still on floppies. Atari and Commodore sources are next. Original source code would have made this whole process a lot easier. I went to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Set up a vendor booth, met a bunch of really cool people. Many had played in their youth at home or in computer labs at school. Met the author of the Atari 2600 homebrew Loadrunner game and picked one up. Unfortunately, I didn't get a photo. Overall, the event was amazing and I hope to attend again next year. I ported Frots, the Windows Z machine, to the Pico, allowing it to run Zork and other Infocom games. Wait, what? Focus, please. Here's the latest 6502 PCB. It's a four layer board and it works well. I'm working on the next iteration with the integrated VGA. This version is 320 by 200 and monochrome. The format is one bit per pixel. The most stable version yet and by far. I rewrote the line drawing routines. High res graphics are similar to, but not exactly the same as the Apple II. I was hoping to make it Apple II compatible, but the VGA display is not conducive for this. The Apple II graphics consist of groups of seven pixels. Not sure how to do that with the VGA circuit. This version is using an EEPROM to generate the signal, essentially the technique used by George Foote's simplest TTL VGA card. The original SVGA video had a hardware text mode. For this version, I tried it in software. All of the pixels for text, scrolling, etc. are rendered by the CPU. The text to render is cached in memory, and the CPU runs through it all and rasterizes each one of the pixels. It's super slow compared to hardware text. So I added a hardware text mode back in. So much faster. Now I have graphics and text mode working in the same circuit. Here are some images rendered on the current hardware. This should be perfectly sufficient to get LoadRunner working. I need to check the schematic and send off for a combined PCB that include the CPU and video. I don't have LoadRunner working on the hardware yet, but it feels inevitable. Here's the latest PCB, which is on order, 183 by 183 millimeter. If you have any questions or would like me to go into any detail on any part, please post in the comments. If you're interested in buying a LoadRunner appliance, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.